Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 3,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 100 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. This is your main man, RJ, from the Ringside Rant, heard only on the Visionaries Wrestling Network. So go over and subscribe across all your major platforms, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Stitcher, to hear every great interview I have every Monday on the Visionaries Wrestling Network. Go over and follow the show's page on Twitter, at underscore Ringside Rant. Follow the network's page, at BizWrestleNet. And, as always... Embrace the vision. Hello, friends. This is Spencer Love, your host of Over the Top Rope on the Wind Column Sports Network. Don't forget you can head to windcolumnsports.ca for all of your previews, reviews, and breaking news from the world of wrestling, be it your major promotions or from the great province of Alberta, Canada. If you like podcasts, and you are listening to on Backbreaker Media, then you should listen to me, Chris Parrish, and myself, Manoia, and the Sounds of Struggle, because we are literally the most entertaining duo you'll ever come across in Western Canadian wrestling, baby. We talk about things like wrestling, and other sports we like. Like wrestling? But we won't talk about other sports that we don't like. Because it's not that kind of podcast. Like wrestling. I mean, uh, I mean, we like hockey. And wrestling. And we like football. And wrestling. And we also like to drink beer. While wrestling. Well, not while wrestling, but while watching wrestling. Yes. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. uh, If you want to get into a conversation with Maniac and Chris Parrish, then you need to tune into The Sounds of Struggle live on Backbreaker Media. Every Thursday. That's when we hope to draw, but sometimes Mal Ma- Mike Malawaney doesn't do his job right. Or we're too drunk to forget. Yeah, that happens too. Yeah. Uh, he can bleep out the swear word, because we weren't supposed to do that. Oh, but, I'll try not to swear. Ah, f- I can't do it. Yeah. Um, let's face it. The two of us, we're real. And spectacular. And we're a little bit of all right. Yeah. We're also struggleicious. That we are. That was kind of the key. It's supposed to be a circle. Oh, sorry, I'm trying. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if you don't want to listen to us, then no. You're stupid because we're entertaining. And uh, if you want to do listen to us, then uh, yeah, come listen to us on Backbreaker Media. Yeah. Later, he said. Bi- later, bitches. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Quick Calls. I am your host, Andre C., uh, and I am joined here tonight by the wrestling mind, Brian Hamilton. Hey, how's it going, guys? And making his return to Quick Calls in a long time, the legend, T. James Logan. Hey, kids. And we are here at PWA New Year's Resolution featuring the Resolution Rumble. And, man, I had a really fun time tonight, some surprises throughout. Yeah, you know what? I couldn't have guessed some of the people that were going to be in this. <laughs> we'll go over it later, but man, one of the surprises was a bit of it mind-blowing, time travel kind of weird crap. We'll talk about that later, I guess. Yeah, Brian, your thoughts on just how, how, just, wow, right? Oh, what incredible show, man. We had two huge announcements to, first to start off the show. My God, and in the Rumble match itself, uh, where we had five great matches total, unbelievable. Yeah, so we start off the show, they bring out uh, PWA owner, the one and only Kurt Sorokin, and he uh, makes the announcement of our new Edmonton commissioner and friend to this show, and a man I've known for a few years now, it is Thaddeus Archer III. Now, who would have ever thought that? 
I wouldn't guess it unless I had walked into the thing and seen him earlier hopping around. Didn't put it together until they said, new commissioner. I turned to somebody and said, I wonder if it's Thaddeus. And boom, out he came. That was just a fluke guess, though. It's not, uh, I'm not a mind reader. Uh, yeah. Brian, your thoughts on Thaddeus being the new commissioner of PWA? Oh, it's just incredible. But, like, I kind of figured something was up because he did say goodbye in his last Archer report to RCW. And we didn't really know what's going on with him. But, wow. New commissioner, you know, if he did what he was doing in RCW, he'll be doing a good job here. I can't wait to see what he has for decisions for tonight. And it was kind of good. He escaped top talent and no talent. Yeah, so yeah. Steve, Steve is no talent. <laughs> and so we go on from there, and then they bring in former PWA champion, um, formerly known as Michael Avery, Michael Cook, who is running the pro wrestling YEG show happening this April. April, what's the date again? There, Logan, you remember? No clue. I wish I was listening more. I think it was. I think it's the second Saturday. I think. Thirteenth, the day after my birthday, moron. <laughs> okay, I'm a moron. I guess Sorry. I apologize. It's all good, Brian. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and he brings it in, talk, so he does the promotion to hype it up, saying it, the show will be f- like 100% of proceeds, all tickets sold, will be going to the Kids with Cancer Foundation. And the other thing, and I rec- I really hope a lot of fans do this, is you can sign up on, on Pro Wrestling YEG to become a fundraiser for it, and whatever you fundraise will go to kids with cancer. That's an incredible program, and I gotta tell you folks, every time it comes to cancer things, I always support it. I had cancer when I was younger, I've been a, a survivor, so for me, it's a, it's a great thing. So yeah, uh, sign up kids, do, do what you can for a great cause. Yeah, please, Brian, your thoughts on that, that whole, all that announcement before we get to everything else? Oh, I can't wait. I think this, this show on the 13th of April is gonna be fantastic. Doing a great job, raising money for cancer. For the kids and that, I, I, it's going to be great. I can't wait for the show and see what 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 they're going to have and whatnot. And anytime you can raise money for a good cause, I'm all for it. And actually, they even announced whoever uh, raises the most money, and we've got a pretty idea, good idea on how to do it to win it. They're going to win the Pro Wrestling YEG Championship, or Community Championship, which I think is a huge deal. It would be great to have one of those collectible belts. I know most wrestling fans just wish once they could have one of those belts. And this is a legit win if you think about it. Yeah. I can't. That would be great to win, and it looks like a really nice belt. And, you know, get out there, raise money, and win that belt if you can. Yeah. And so from there, the Western Lions decide to pop, uh, make their way out, and they get in the face of Michael Avery, or Michael Cook, as he likes to be as he's called now and essentially they get in his face they challenge him there's a big back and forth they get get into a bit of a fight but in the end uh, Barry Grayson comes out which is just was was this not a name you expect to interrupt the Lions or something this big and he challenges MRB to a fight and the loser has to go into the Rumble number one yeah you know what uh, once again, Michael Richard Blaze throwing that his mouth sometimes can be a lot bigger than his talent. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a pretty big mouth, dude. Uh, he's got a lot of talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brian, your thoughts on the making this uh, loser gets his first spot match? Oh, I thought it was a great idea because he had MRB coming in so cocky saying he's gonna, him and M- uh, BVD are going to win the whole thing so they can uh, take on uh, the Sheik at uh, the 18th anniversary show 2 on one but but, you know, it kind of didn't work out for him, now, did it? No, because when we go into the match and it's Barry Grayson taking on MRB, and I thought Barry Grayson, like, he got dominated for a, a first... 30 seconds? <laughs> no, for like a good, i said a good, good first 90% of this match. <laughs> it wasn't a very long, <laughs> it wasn't a very long match to be sure, but yes, uh, surprisingly, Barry Grayson showed me a lot more than I've seen from him. I thought maybe he'd get in there and get his head pushed in, but you know what, he, he uh, did rather well. Yeah, I thought, I thought really impressive, I remember showing everything he does, his, his 450, his brain buster, and literally at one point in the match, he lifts up Barry for the brain buster, hits, and looks over at, uh, uh, Michael Cook in the crowd and he says this is for you and drops him with the brain buster 
Yeah, that, that was a deadly move, you know. Uh, he had Michael Cook get involved, so but you know, and he kind of got a little payback on uh, on Mr. MRB too to win that match because he got a little bit involved too, and it was a little bit chaotic there. But in the end, Barry Grayson does get the victory, and MR with a crucifix bomb, a crucifix uh, bomb pin, or he jumped up and he rolled for the crucifix, but he, he like flipped up and like slammed into the ground and got the win. Huge win. I was very disappointed, but. I know MRB could go one t- one to the end very much, so he could he could very much Shawn Michaels it, and we'll see if, if that happens later on. But thoughts overall on the match there, Brian? Uh, overall, I thought it was great. MRB always good, but Rhea Grayson, my God, he's getting a lot better and better every time we see him, and you know, got a huge win over MRB, making MRB enter number one in the Rumble, and you know. For Mr. Grayson, that's got to be a huge win and boost him up in the uh, st- in the uh, um, rankings. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts on the match? Well, you know what? Uh, sometimes it's hard going in when you can have a prejudice against a wrestler. Um, for me, it's a deep-seated hate of people from Grand Prairie. Being, <laughs> being from Grand Cash, I'll always hate Barry Grayson just because he's from Grand Prairie. But he did great tonight. I'll give him that. GP, I still booted you out of the way, but you got the win. Yeah, I'm very impressed. So we move on to our uh, second match of the evening. Oh, was this where um, did he make the? This is where uh, Ivan made the announcement? No, nope. no. Oh, was that? Or oh, never mind. That's after the third match. I apologize. And the second match of the night was a PWA Commonwealth Championship match. Ken, Ken or the above average Kenny Striker taking on PWA Commonwealth Champion Sean Moore and. I, I'm, I'm being. Oh, that's creepy. Uh, oh, that's that's just creepy. <laughs> I'm just getting stared down by Kenny Striker. I don't know, but I, I really enjoy this match. I these are two like Sean Moore. I think is probably one of the best wrestlers in this company, outside of obviously my favorite wrestler in this company, MRB. But I, I think Sean Moore's talent is. Like barred on one of the best anywhere, and like Kenny Striker, I think it was a good match. I I, th- I think Kenny looked a little slow. I think we, we me and me and TJ probably had this conversation. He looked a little slow in there. It was a little bit slow. Um, he seemed very tentative. Maybe he's so used to tag team. Uh, but yeah, he did. Ha- he was effective. I like his new look. Got to say the haircut. Looks really good on him. Yep. Uh, enjoy. He, hey, the, the senton he did off the top rope was amazing looking. I legit didn't I, think he was going to f- rotate the whole way. Oh, yeah. I When it came off, I was like, wow, that's like Jeff Hardy style shit. You know, I liked like, it. It was just before he hits him, his, when he rotates yep. forward, it was scary. Scary. Yeah. Uh, this was a great match by both of them. You know, uh, Kenny Stryker looked great. He got the new haircut, and Sean Moore, great as always. And he. Sean Moore is one of those guys, he's better and better every time we see him, you know, he's one of the best here in Western Canada. It, it proved that he got a huge win over Kenny with that running knee to the head, which was, my God, it, I thought it knocked Kenny out, but, you know, he got the win, and great for him, he keeps his title, so let's see what's in store for him at the next show. Yeah, that shotgun knee, I will, I will, I will, I am impressed by every time, and it, it's just, the, you hear the connection, just that crack, and you're just like, oh my God, did he did he break his, his head open? Yeah, you know, I, I got to say this about Sean Moore. He is probably one of the best guys floating around in Western Canada right now. Um, the only detriment that he'll ever have in his career is, unfortunately, if he was three or four inches taller, he would be a legitimate contender for a bigger company. Unfortunately, places like the WWE won't look at guys under a certain height. But 205 Live. But even on 205 Live, yeah. those are guys who really had to go international ringer to Very get around. So. Um, but you know what? He's, he deserves to be in the big times. And maybe, you know, maybe he'll make it into ROH. There, there's, there's a new company starting up. You never know. Oh, this all elite crap. We'll see how that goes. But but I, I, I legit think him, MRB, and there's a few, a couple others in this company, I think could be legit people that can go on to do something else. So we move on to our third match of the evening, and it is a, it is in the PWA Women's Division. It is the PWA Women's Division, and Kat Von he's taking on Zoe Sager for I don't know how many time in a row. Uh, this is, I believe this is the 342nd time, and it's nice to see that she got a win for a change. Yeah, so Zoe. Zoe actually picked up the win where every month we just see her getting, getting crushed and beat up and just destroyed by Kat Von Hees, but in the end gets gets the gets the victory over Kat Von Hees, like... Good for her. Yeah, very uh, 
shocking because the cat, she cat's a big, powerful woman, and well, she, she's she's been she fights she goes toe to toe with men. Yeah, and and then we got Zoe. She's what, probably four foot nine, if that. She's a little short girl, but she it, looks like she's twelve. Twelve, true, but I mean, she's got a lot of spunk and feist in her, you know. And it pulled. so tonight, she looks oh, sorry, fifteen. She got a huge win over one of the best uh, female wrestlers in in Canada right now, and that you know that's got to do something for her after how how many shows they've been going after it, you know. Get a huge win over Cat, great for her. Let's see if she can keep this roll up, and you know. Hopefully we get more women, though. Yes, and then, yeah, so they're so getting the victory. So we move on, and Ivan decides to make an announcement, and he announces, and he said this legitimately, our first special guest, our, our, our first special guest, like our first special guest, it wrestler, and it is former, or I think, or actually I think it's current or former PWG champion, I can't remember if he's former, former, um, the current ROH TV champion, world television champion, it, it, former Olympian, for, he is Olympian in 2004. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Cobb is coming, as we heard, back to the PWA. Brian, when have you ever seen Jeff Cobb here? I can't remember if I have. If it, I have, it was probably in the really early days of PWA, and I've been. Maybe much, he was wearing a mask or something. He could have been. I mean, I've been to pretty much every PWA shows for 18 years, and you know, he maybe he was under a different name too. Who knows? Yeah, I. Uh, and he said 10 years ago. That's about a year and change after I started coming. So I, 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 I don't know either. Yeah, so it, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see him. And I've been, I'm a huge fan of Jeff Cobb. I love watching him on Ring of Honor. Yep. It's gonna be great to see him in person and meet him, man. I can't wait for the anniversary but show. He is deceptive. If you watch him in the ring, he is deceptively short. He's small, but my God, he's powerful. Look, you, look at his frame; it's crazy. Oh God, he's you know he's he's got a small. He's not tall, but he, he's short, but he's God, stocky and, and belted. I don't know. I hope whoever's got to go up against him, good luck because you're going to well, need well, it. We, uh, we're going to get to him. We know who's not going to go up against him. Yeah. But, but, yeah. And so we move on to our uh, fourth match of the evening. It is a PWA champion, Sheik Sabaz, comes out, and he makes the announcement. He was supposed to take on Michael Allen and Richard Clark for the championship tonight, but Michael Allen and Richard Clark could not make the drive, and <laughs> there is – things to that that makes me happy very very happy inside yeah no no uh, and usually jeff tyler hides in uh mecca and richard clark's trunk to get over here and since my Richard clark couldn't make it oh jeff tyler woohoo! yeah bummer but you know what i hate I, jeff tyler i did i she kind of got on the mic and said that mr mark Michael Allen, Allen Richard, Richard Clark, Clark was kind of scared he had to travel here because of the he was because of the roads being shitty, which is a bunch of bullshit. Mr. Sean Moore made it here and he comes from Saskatchewan too. Yep, and uh, dumbass. Yeah, so uh, he puts out an open challenge and who comes out? Colton Kelly. No. No, 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 no. It was it was the Fury, Kenneth Fury, Anthony. And then Titan. And then Titan. Then he's like, no, 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 no. And then the Titan comes out. Yeah. And then Titan goes, no, 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 no. And then that's when we got Colton coming yeah, out. That's right. Yeah, and Colton Kelly accepts the challenge from Sheik Akbar Shabazz. But Sheik does say in this, he said he's not putting the championship on the line in this match. But he says if it's okay with Mr. Thaddeus Archer III, and, and Archer approved this, that if Colton Kelly wins, he gets the last spot in the match. Yeah. Now, Brian, I'm going to have to put it over to you here because I missed part of this match because I had to go to the bathroom during this. Uh, so I'm going to give it up to you for this yeah. one. Uh, this was actually a really good match. Uh between the two, but you know, it, she, well, Colton, he had his boys out there. He had the Fear, he had Titan, and he had Dr. Kyoto. The time traveling millennial. But, you know, in the end, though, it kind of didn't really work out for Mr. Kelly because the Sheik, he kind of did his toss, hammer toss his, on His him. camel toss? Yes. <laughs> he did his burning hammer toss on Oh, Ms. burning hammer. Sorry, that was a camel toss. Or camel toss, whatever. He did a. Where he picked him up and just tossed him across the ring. The, the razor's edge style move, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the camel toss. Yeah. And, well, Mr. Kelly got pinned and Mr. Sheik won. 
And so Sheik wins. Uh, Colton <laughs> Kelly does not get the final spot guaranteed to him. He, there's a very good chance he could have got it out of the tumbler, but did not get a guarantee to him. <laughs> so we went to intermission, and actually one of the longer intermissions at, the, at a PWA show. Then we come back, and it is time for the New Year's Resolution Rumble. So I have sitting in front of me the eliminations. Brian has sitting in front of him the entrances. Should we just run down the entrances and then run through the eliminations yeah. and give our highlights as we go? Yeah. Okay, so you want to run us down the, the, the entrance in order? Okay, the first one was MRB, number two. Uh, as we, we, we heard from the Lord. Yeah. Number two is Marky. Which is a huge... Huge for this company was uh, the return of the Mark. PWA, the PE, as he was known elsewhere for a while, the original. But he he is now back as and he the PWA original is back. I I when that popped on my screen, me, Ryan and Amanda like were jumping like we yeah. were just like yes. Yeah, I don't think nobody expected to see Marky in PWA again, you know. But great to see Marky come back. From there, we had uh, Colton Kelly coming in at number three. Yep. Flexton Maxwell at number four. Kenneth Anthony at number five. And it was after that that we did get our first elimination. And Flex Maxwell did get eliminated after after uh, that. I can't remember who eliminated. I only got the who eliminated a little bit. Was eliminated by Colton and uh, Kenneth. There you go. Yeah. Um, then we had uh, we had uh, Kenny, Knight, Kenny, Knight, Kenny, no, Kenny Striker. Then we had Nightmare 2.5. I, 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 I prefer what we thought it was, 205. Yeah. Because <laughs> he is smaller. He is a smaller yeah. one. Then we had number eight was Aiden Adams. Number nine was Nightmare number two. Yep. Number ten. My God. Surprise entrant. A surprise entrant. Our own very special, our own referee, Michael Fitzpatrick. And he had probably one of the the, like the, the, the most crowd-pleasing parts in this match. He got in there. Um, what did, I can't, he hit. He hit. What did he hit? MRB. With? No, kids. He got. He hit. I can't remember. He hit, hit a move. Then he hit the rock bottom on somebody. Then he hit a stunner on MRB. Yeah. And almost eliminated him. Yeah. And, and, and the funny thing is, when when the, the countdown ended, my MRB is looking at the screen to see who's coming out or whatever. And all of a sudden, the name comes out. Michael Fitzpatrick. He's like, whatever. Fitzpatrick gets in, takes his shirt off, and. Holy crap, man! I'm, I was surprised with Fitzpatrick. He's got some moves for for a referee. Hey, I, he, he shocked me. It, I, it didn't mean because the guy has Holy been around. Shit. How long has that guy been here? Like day since one? Uh, day one. Uh, he's got. He's got to learn how to wrestle. Yeah. There's no way he didn't learn how to wrestle. No. So Too like, he, I, 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 so a guy with how long he's been here and being one of the originals, I can't. I, can't, I wasn't surprised that he could go in that ring. Yeah. Very impressive. Uh, yeah. And from there, number 11 was BVD. Number 12, the Man of Steel, Chris Steele. Number 3, the th 13, the sick Thickness, Reed Matthews. 14, Titan. 15, Mojabari. 16, Mephisto. We'll get to that, what what goes on with that in a little bit. You... 17, Slammer. 18, Sean Moore. 19, Kat Von Hees. 20, Breer Grayson. Yeah, Barry Grayson, yeah. And... Ladies and gentlemen, as, as he was announced pre to be in this rumble, and he didn't show up. No, Jeff Tyler, because I hate Jeff Tyler. Yeah, we know you do. So, so does Ryan and Amanda. Boo. All right, so we're gonna get to here. We're gonna go through the elimination. So, as we I said say earlier, Flex and Maxwell was eliminated first by Colton Kelly and uh, uh, Kenneth Anthony. I always want to keep Kenny Striker. And then Kenny Striker was the second man eliminated. Yeah. Who was he eliminated by again? MRB and Colton Kelly. Yeah, MRB and Colton Kelly. The third elimination came was Michael the Fist, Fist, Michael the Fist, Fist Patrick after coming in number 10. Like, we went for a good long run with yeah. our elimination. He was and, eliminated by BVD. Yeah, BVD, who, was, who, who actually came in. I pressed him over his head and just threw, tossed him to the ground. Like, he was pissed about all the shit he was doing when he came <laughs> in and, and, to, and just tossed the guy. Then we got the elimination of Nightmare number 2 and Nightmare number 205 at the same time by Titan. Yeah. Yeah, Titan came in and was just terrorizing and just grabbed them both by the throats. And this is after, and just, just threw them both over top. Yeah. But we did actually. I gotta mention something that where Nightmare Number Two was in here, and he was wearing sandals. Sandals. <laughs> and at one point, he got suplexed, and the sandals came flying off. 
<laughs> that was hilarious. And then he's trying to find his saddle. He's looking all over for it. He got Matt riddled, baby. He got, he got Matt riddled, baby. Yes. Yeah. So then uh, Kenneth, An then this is where it, the Millennial Rebels kind of broke down. Yeah. Kenneth really Anthony was ordering strange. Titan to leave the ring. Titan goes and he, the, the funny part about it was he didn't go over the top. He went under the top rope. And yeah. then kind of stood there, and Kenneth was like, yes, 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 he's gone. Titan comes back in, and the crowd popped for it. And he ended up grabbing Kenneth Anthony and tossing him out of the ring. And then Colton ran up, threw uh, uh, Titan, and like threw Titan over the top, and that's where uh, Marky ran up and threw Colton over. Like... I don't know what's going on with the Rebels. I, I, it's it's yeah, falling apart. crazy. I, mean, he, he, I think Titan's been disrespecting long enough. I think uh, Reed Matthews really has to uh, maybe uh, talk to the Titan at this point and see maybe, maybe he can find a partner in him. Maybe, yeah. But after those three got eliminated, they were standing on the floor. And now... If, if you've ever watched, I think it was 1993 Royal Rumble. Yeah, something like that. It's 93. That, yeah. Mil Mascaras was in the Rumble, and he did what most people would think is the dumbest move in a Royal Rumble, and went over the top and self eliminated. Was it 1994? 19 I swear it was 93. Oh, no, 93 was Ric Flair. So you're right, 94. 92 was Ric Flair. Oh, ni no, no, yeah, 93. I think it was 93 for Mil. Whatever year it was, it was early 90s. I can't yes. remember. It was, it was during the down period. But Mil Mascaras leaped over the top rope to the outside to land on a guy he was feeding with in Mexico and self-eliminated himself. And this is what Reed Matthews did tonight. He ran, leaped over the top, came down on top of... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm way off. My mask was Royal Rumble 1997. I apologize, as I've been told. As well, we knew it was in the '90s, we just were a little. Off. I was, just, I was way off. But yeah, um, and he self and Reed Matthews just over the top swanton to the outside. Yeah, just crashes down on these guys. Crazy. Yeah, and then uh, this is and and the next elimination was Chris Steele, and so Mephisto was out in the ring with with Chris Steele. Now. This has puzzled some of us. As yeah. In the past, we all thought that Chris Steele was Mephisto. It was under the Mephisto mask. I guess uh, we were wrong. Apparently <laughs> so. And, he, uh, he had a very striking resemblance to somebody. He, yes. If, if, if you might, maybe you understand what I'm saying here. And Mephisto actually eliminated Chris Steele. Yeah, he did. He eliminated my pick to win. Bummer. Yeah, and then he also eliminated right afterwards Aiden Adams. Yeah, he did too, and Aiden put up a fight, but, well, not too good. But Slammer being the Slammer, as always, he gets the elimination of Mephisto. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that was great to see that. Showing the power. And then this is where and then next up Catfoss he he's was actually eliminated by Mojabari, who he hit her, she kinda went over, but then she came back. He hit her a few times, picked her up and just slammed her over the slammed her over the slammed her over. She ended up on the apron and then he just super kicked her right off the apron. Yeah, that was uh Pretty neat to see. I wasn't expecting to see Mo do that to Cat, but you know, great for him. He eliminated the one, the most powerful woman there is in PWA. And then maybe three, four seconds later, Sean Moore tosses, just grabs Jabari and just tosses him the hell out. Yeah. Wow. When Jabari's not even a hundred and forty pounds soaking wet, and who probably the lightest guy on the roster, he gets tossed around pretty good, like it, like Mr. Cheeseburger in ROH. Yeah. Uh, and then next up, Sean Moore was eliminated by the PWA original Marky. And then after that, Barry Grayson was eliminated by both of the Lions after mounting a pretty good uh, attack on both of them. Yeah, that was... You know, I got to give it up, Mr. Grayson. He did pretty good, but when you got the Rebel, the Millennium... The Lions. The Lions in there, two-on-one, you, you don't have a chance. And then Slammer gets eliminated by Brandon Van Danielson, and we are down to our final three of, well, this is Mr. Of, number of number one, and and of number one, number two, and number eleven. Yeah, so crazy. I legit. At one point, Emma, uh, Marky got BVD over the top rope, then pulled him through the middle, like in between the middle and top, went for his leg drop, and I literally started writing BVD eliminated before he was eliminated because I legit thought when he hit the leg drop, BVD was going to go to the outside. Yeah. 
No, he managed to come, he rolled back into the ring. And the finish came where MRB, or sorry, uh, Marky grabbed MRB and went for his corner bulldog, ran up the corner, but was caught by Brandon, but then took his, and it, the, then the Lions tried to toss MR, uh, Marky out, but he pulled them over, and they all came crashing down in one big heap in front of us. I swear Marky's feet hit the floor first, but, and the Lions are, are your co-winners, but they... Uh, Brian, your thought they came down right in front of us. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, you know, the the opposite the opposite side of the camera too. Yeah. The camera and the refs didn't see it because they were on the far other well, corner. The refs were on one side on on, on they, the, they were they all did, on the other side trying to separate them all. Be, or there was a big separation from earlier and then yeah. but then the rest had made their all the way back, back to the side. So one was on the one side, one was on the other, and one was on the complete opposite yeah. side from us. And yeah, nobody was on that side because yeah, we only so have, I guess we only got three officials in PWA. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, and like you said though, like all three went over, but where we well I I don't know about your eyes, but my in my eyes, B V D or M R B touched first, B V D and then Marky landed no, on no, top I saw of Mark, him. Uh, wait, I, but, I saw MRB. You know, but this is where it got all confusing because the refs didn't know what was going on. The commissioner didn't go know what was going on. Neither did Kurt go what was going on. So out, and they're all back in the ring. They're all arguing. Yeah. And she got pressure. Vaz decides to make his way out and gets a hold of the mic. Yeah. So he decides, you know what? He challenges all four men to a fatal four-way match at the anniversary show and yeah. this crowd exploded just for that but then our uh, genius of a commissioner decides to up the ante with the chance permission and I'm going to let we have, we're just getting to your announcement and we're joined by the new PWA commissioner Thaddeus Underserd and we're just getting to your announcement of the main of with the main event of the anniversary show you want to you want to tell all the fans what it was <laughs> Well, did you discuss what happened? Yeah, we discussed what happened. That that Sheik asked, challenged everybody to a fatal four-way match. Yep, yeah. It, I thought, you know, those four men in a match together was amazing, but why not make it better? So I threw my spin on it. A TLC match for the I'm, PWA Heavyweight Championship. That is, that's all. We, we all, I think the entire crowd, the entire place popped. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All of us were just like, yes! <laughs> we were we were we were having a great. We loved it, man. No, and it, it's at the Nate Gym, you know, where PWA started. And they've had some infamous. Brian will know. He's a story. They've had some infamous ladder matches there, TLC matches. So why why not? You know, I'm here to help take care of things, make sure that, like Kurt said, the inmates don't run the asylum. And at the same time, I, I also want up the ante because yep. with me, nothing is simple. Everything's loud, and let's up the ante and have a TLC match. You've, you've already uh, up the suit game here in PWA. Got to have a new suit. Yeah, no, well, you're, it's... you're already outclassed the suit man himself in this company. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. No, uh, we're looking forward to that show. We're still back next month. Yep, uh, February, February 23rd. Correct. And then What's the Calgary date. The Calgary date. I don't see. I think it's two weeks prior to February 23rd. It will be two weeks prior, and you'll have to ask Duke Durango for that because to yeah. correct you earlier, I am the Edmonton Edmonton Commissioner, commissioner. new PWA Edmonton Commissioner. Yes. Right. So I look forward to it, and that show at Nate's going to be off the hook. Yeah. So and yeah, as he said, it is a TLC match for the Archer main event. Out. It is a TLC match for the main event of the anniversary show. I'm pumped. I know Brian's oh my super pumped. I cannot wait for this anniversary show. We got a TLC match. You're gonna have to wait. I don't. We got the TLC match. We've got uh, Tyson Wilson coming back. TJ Wilson. TJ Wilson. Tyson, otherwise known as Tyson Kidd. You get it, I get it up too. And we got Jeff Cobb right now. But who knows what else is going to be coming? Who's going to face Jeff Cobb? Yeah, exactly. I mean, 18 years for this company. I'm thinking. I'm thinking it should be a PWA Commonwealth title match. No, it's you know it's going to be great. Put the have the ROH TV champion PWA Commonwealth title. Let's have a have a match for. Yeah, I would love to see see Jeff Cobb challenge Sean Moore for the title. I would. That would. I would. Oh my God! I'd, Sean Moore and him. Have a heart attack. I, I but, have an orgasm. Sorry. Oh, that's a little. That, too. That's to that sore, but that would be a hell of a good match. Sean Moore, <laughs> Jeff Cobb. Book it, book it, that is. My God. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the highlights of the night. Um, Brian, your highlight of the night. Oh, uh, mine is is when Kenny Stryker kind of did he... A swanton. Did a swanton on three guys. On the Millennial Rebels, he had MRB, 
Town, and then he had Colton Kelly on top of MRB, yeah. on, on top of MRB, and then he had Kenneth Anthony on top of him. And then when he did the Santon, poof, they all went head first into each other. They all went squish. He squished squish. them all together. Yeah, that was in, that was a, an incredible moment to see that in the Rumble match. I loved it. And I just want to give out one more shout. This is my second pick. I got to give it to the to the crowd for showing up tonight. Yep. Uh, crowd, this crowd was insane. A packed building tonight. Can't give it up. And uh, great, great showing. I loved it. So Brian's bonus start to the crowd. So my highlight night, it's got to go to MRB and MRB suplexing Marky off the top and into a bunch of the guys in 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 the ring. And I I was. I was like, wow. Oh my God, that was incredible to I just look, look beauty. And I, um, I'm i going to take two bonus stars. One goes to the return of the PWA original Marky, because yes. who, who thought he'd be coming back? I never thought he would oh, be. I didn't either. know if he'd ever come back. The awesome. crowd, when he came, the crowd went bonkers. I loved it. And I have to give an extra bonus star, because I'm giving it up to the debut PWA debut of that of the new Edmonton Commissioner that is Archer III. Oh God! I, I I absolutely loved seeing him here. Oh me too. I think you know Thaddeus. Let's see, he's been RCW, now here. I think he's going to do great. He's going to run the world at he, some point. He's he's going to yeah, but I think he's going to do great for RC or for PWA man. He did good. RC PWA. When, when, what's that? So when he was that? when he was with RCW. For the short time that he was Especially there. Especially this last year, he really last helped year, build The them. last year, because of, yeah, he As did. As a commissionership, like, he took, what, a, was it over in April? And he really helped he build up them. He changed it and from what it was, because it was, it was a pretty horrible show. I didn't even go to it for a longest time. And, Me too. And then I started going again, and the last couple, few, the last few months I've been going to it, much more better improvement, and he did a hell of a good and, job. And, 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 he, and he's coming to a company that's and, on gangbusters right now. Yeah. And he, I think he's only going to improve it. Yeah, and you know, eighteen. He's coming to a company, been going eighteen years. Kurt, with Kurt behind the wheel, I can't wait to see what he's going to have in store. Cannot wait. So Thaddeus is going to do a wonderful job for PWA. I, I, I very much so. So Brian, I want to thank you very much for joining me on here. Do you want to plug, plug, plug your plugs? Oh, uh, you can get me at on Twitter at uh, Wrestling Mind. Uh, feel the. Touch me up, ask me questions. Can't wait to hear from you. Yeah, yeah uh, you can find me on Twitter at that Canada guy on Instagram at that Canada dude. Uh, don't forget to check out Brackbreaker Media on Twitter at Brackbreaker Media because we don't need the A because we're Canadian enough. Yes, and we are a division of Win Column Sports. Check them out on WinColumnSports.ca. I want to give another a thank you to our good friend, the legend T. James Logan, for joining us on this podcast. Yes. Uh, he's a busy man. He's running around getting a lot of scoops and stuff, interviews for for shows. Not wait to see what he comes up with. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, and so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for jo- for joining us here on the quick calls from the PWA New Year's Resolution featuring the Resolution Rumble. And uh, if you're going to make a good call, make a quick call. And this has been quick calls from that well, the show I just told you about. And please, ladies and gentlemen, uh, support independent wrestling wherever you are.